What's up, guys? Yep, we're back. Uh, that was the hour mark. It ended in an hour. We invited Ben back. Let's see if he comes back on. We're going to answer some questions. Yep, I know uh, the Instagram started limiting the stories to an hour, so we'll post both of them and see what's up. So got plenty of dudes on here. Let me see if uh, if Ben's going to come on. All right. We good? Everybody got sound? Hopefully it's back up. A live chat with Chris Costa would be amazing. That would be pretty good. Uh, not sure if he would do it. All right. Fucking fucking hour time limit sucks. That's fucking dumb. I want to talk about this BA thing. I think it's around the same time that the staccatos came out, right? I would yeah, but I, I think there's a lot of guys that were on it beforehand. I think Red Dot and Staccato makes for a nice B eight at twenty five. That's what I think. I agree. So what's with the 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 B eight mentality like there are plenty of guys that, that, like, I've seen dudes shooting rifle B8s at, like, 5 to 10 yards. Like, what? Yeah, oh, that's a thing. Dude, any of you guys out there listening, like, have you been to classes like rifle B8s inside of 20, 15? I've seen a lot of 5 and 10-yard videos. Like, what is the, what's the takeaway with shooting a B8? Is it because the reset's easier, like B8s are cheaper than USBSA targets? You can just kind of glue some shit and slap it back up. Like, what's the the deal with B8s? What's the like, deal? How popular was a 700-point aggregate? Not popular. <laughs> that shit you have to do at a certain point, but not shit anybody likes doing. Are you kidding no, me? The, dude, the 700 – so – the 700 point aggregate fucking sucks. Like that's a horrible shooting exercise. One to pass it when you have to pass it. It's very, very challenging. So in terms of if that's going to be your thing, like, Hey, I shoot the 700. I shoot. So for the pistol, it's a 700 point aggregate for the rifle. It's a 500 point aggregate. If that's your thing, then that's good. But I will tell you from kind of the training pathway that I went, as soon as we were solid checked off on the 700s, we went to practical shooting exclusively. And it stayed that way for my next 12 years. So do with that what you want. That was my experience too. I did slow fire shooting and group shooting type stuff until I could do it. And then I stopped doing it. Yeah. And then it was like, okay. It's a way for some it. tactical instructors to stay relevant, shoot accurate and slow, make it about accountability. Yeah, but that's not relevant. So. It's not relevant. So let, let's talk about this accountability thing, right? So in terms of, like, for you guys out there, what are you talking about with accountability? Is it – because I hear guys say it's accountability for every single round. But then – they train in a way that doesn't support an actual engagement. So where are you building this accountability? Like what happens if you, if, if you're a hundred percent accountability guy, I'm accountable for every shot. Is that a training mentality that is just like an umbrella that sits over you or what are the repercussions if you're not accountable in your own training session? 
I don't know what it means to not be. I feel like I'm accountable for whatever I do anyway. Yeah, then how do you account for mistakes? Uh, that I made a mistake. <laughs> you know, I, miss, I, I miss a lot on the way to learning to go fast. But it's a weird thing, right, where with that, the 100% accountability world, right? Like, That's just guys who, who say, you can never miss. Like, I've seen that with more with police type of circles where it's like, you know, every bullet has a lawyer attached to it and this is that type of mentality. Um, if cops had the, I can never miss mentality, their hit percentages wouldn't be what they are. Cops miss all the time. You miss more than you hit in real engagements across the board. So, so where does this idea come from? Uh, I think it comes from that. <laughs> They're like, I don't know. Maybe it's like they look at the nor the stats for how many misses there are. They're like, oh, we need to hit more. So we can slow the training down, guys. We got we're accountable now. I don't know. I don't know what these I people are thinking. <laughs> I do think I do think that's kind of one of the easy answers, right? Is guys are like, slow down and get your hits. You got to get your hits, and you should slow down. That would be more accountable. Yeah, it's yeah the yeah. So Jamie, yeah, the thir thirteen percent hit rate right whatever depending on what numbers you look like at for science 13 to 27 percent hits right and when you when you put that across like a cop pulls his gun out right i honestly believe there is he's either going to shoot 15 rounds or 17 rounds and that is dependent upon what type of platform he's shooting so <laughs> that, how many that, rounds he carries. Yeah. Whether you shoot a Glock 19, you're going to get 15. You shoot a Glock 17, you're going to get 17. Pressburg uses but, BH. He does say all gunfights are an open class competition. Okay. Huh. What's up? Pressburg says all gunfights are an open class competition. <laughs> open class in terms of like uh, equipment? The guns? You just bring whatever you want, I guess. He's Probably not yeah, wrong. you can bring whatever you want. I would say, like, I'm not taking gunfighting experience from fucking Chuck because I'm just not. So, talk it's about not, it's, Shrek. That's the the sheriff of Baghdad. Yeah, John Shrek. What's his conspiracy theories? I don't yeah, know. Tell what us they about are. the conspiracy theories. I want to come I up with a cool nickname for Matt, guys. I was thinking the. Uh, what do you think the? Uh, if it's not the sheriff of Baghdad, what would you be? Like the the marshal of Mogadishu, maybe? No, I've never been to Mogadishu. That doesn't fucking matter, Matt. It's a cool name. God oh, damn. Oh, all right. Well. Doesn't have to be this. true. Cause Actual. Yeah. Cause Actual is literally my favorite page on Instagram. And you guys need to stop talking shit about him. He, what he does is amazing. Who's we Cause Actual? Uh, he's I like think I Miami guy. He works out a lot, and he has cigars and Porsches, and you know, yeah, it's a vibe. It's a whole vibe. With he's that like guy. maybe he's he's like a Cuban guy. But ah, he's the Sultan of Syria. You've been to Syria, Matt? I think he, he's dark skinned, and he has yeah the cigars. Yes, I would oh, not be the, Sultan. the Sultan of Sultan of Syria. That's perfect. No, so if you guys actually the aristocrat know, of Afghanistan, like some legitimate nicknames, I am the mayor of Hawthorne, Nevada. Literally, what? Yeah, that's you don't get nicknames based off of what you're doing on Target. Like we did a huge training evolution, and uh, just outside of Reno, but we were staying in Hawthorne, Nevada, and I turned the VW in Hawthorne, Nevada, into the best club in Nevada for, like, two nights in a row. And I became the mayor of Hawthorne, Nevada. That's a good nickname. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I still like mayor of Mogadishu, but that's fine. Never been to Mogadishu. I don't know. I could be the shithead of Baghdad. I could be the fucking no-fail pistol wizard or whatever, like, Assign whatever you want. I don't Hawthorne a is a shithole, apparently. Uh oh. Hawthorne's very bad. It's like a one strip desert town. The best place to drink is the VFW. 
And we literally invigorated that place years ago to where we kept them running for years and years based on how much money we dumped in there. Sheriff of Baghdad says that trigger jerk doesn't exist and pulls the trigger with a ratchet. Okay, well. Um... <laughs> yeah, so that's, dude, we talked about this, right? That is yeah. such a fucking gimmick, right? Like, hold the gun, and now I am somehow going to put a thing in there and slap your fucking trigger. Um, I understand what that's doing to, like, hey, you can run the trigger really hard without pulling it, but from a student standpoint, how are you fixing the f fundamental skills of grip to be able to do that? Like, do you see any value? Well, in I mean, that, pulling but... the trigger with a ratchet. Um, but the problem is the ratchet is connected to your hand. You know, when you're no. pulling it. Yeah, no. He puts the handle of a ratchet in there and slaps it. Okay, well, um, I, I, do, I do see value in pulling the trigger for students. So I'll tell you what I do a lot. I, a lot when people aren't understanding the recoil control, which as many don't, um, I'll make sure their grip is good. So I will put my hands on the gun one hand at a time while they do the other hand, get the pressures the way I want, and then say, hey, look at the spot you want to hit. Just keep looking at the spot, keep holding the gun that way. Then I pull the trigger for them. When the gun comes back down, I just pull it again. And what will happen is they'll start changing their hand tensions and they'll start fighting the gun and they'll – they will feel right away. They're like, oh, fuck, like I'm doing that. They will feel what's happening. The problem is when they pull the trigger, a lot of times there's sympathetic movement in their firing hand that they've yeah. trained in. And they know, they, especially under recoil, they cannot feel or assess that. So when, when I pull the trigger for them, a lot of times they can. They, they'll feel it. So when, when they can't feel and assess it, though, right, it becomes a – what I see it as, like, it's a timeline thing. Like, well, we have to shoot until you feel it, right? How many times are you going to shoot this drill when the result is not what you want it to be until you fucking fix it? Uh, well, okay. So open enrollment civilian classes, shoot the drill until you fix it. It's not really an answer because there's only so much ammo uh, and they're not going to fix it. Yeah. Because, you know, I know people, they're not going to fix it. So uh, that's, you know, I like to get involved at some point. No, yeah. No, I agree with that. It's it's a different thing. Like I I don't know how I would deal with like an open enrollment civilian class where guys are just well, I just wanna give me the, the right thing to do. Like is it ten percent pressure on this? Is it this or whatever? Like You don't think it becomes a personal attack. Personal attacks, those are kind of fun. Yeah, we get to hold hands if you come to the class, Mike. Wait. <laughs> you want? What, did Lu what did Lucas say about personal attacks? I don't know, but I'm on board with whatever it is. The comment, product the comment section is way more productive than any other group on IG. Well, it's probably true. It may be because, one, no one's getting banned. You're not going to get blocked or whatever. Like, you can – motherfuck whatever and and i honestly think a lot of guys view like i don't know what the what the what the comment was but the personal attack thing is if i say something like hey ben i don't agree with what you're doing like this thing makes no sense to me it's dumb yeah and if i said that to you if i text that to you or called you you'd be like well what are you talking about like we would no, have... i'd say that's a personal attack Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but that's that's how people look at it. Like, well, you're personally attacking me. Well, okay. Well, you mean attack your business? Well, it's a clown show operation where you're just selling fucking stories, and I can't figure out if you're a marketing or training company. That's a personal attack. Me asking, like, why are you massaging guys' forearms while they're shooting simple drills at ten yards? as a training tool, I don't understand what your pathway is to train that. That's not a personal attack. That's just I, a, I think that's just a question. You're attacking me. You're also racist and homophobic, Ben. Oh, well, thanks for noticing. In case you were wondering. Okay. 
All right, a couple more questions, man. Let's tie this up. Anything else you've seen that's interesting? Someone massages dudes in class? Oh, shit. Yeah, have you not seen the videos of, like, grabbing guys' forearms? I haven't seen that. I haven't done that. I could – I think you need to massage not their lower back, just just a little bit lower than that. You're going to want to massage right there. <laughs> a little bit lower. Is I've I've not experienced that when I've trained with you. Is that no, like, not one, not 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 one finger, Matt, but two. We've done that. Is that level two? Level two. No, it was training? two fingers. I think that was level one, two finger. Okay. Level. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Well, it's after nine o'clock. I guess this shit's all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Hey, any more questions, Ben? So. You're down in Georgia. You were up in it uh, in Virginia before. Mm -hmm. When are you going home? I'll, I kind of get done with this. When do I fly? The 30th of September, maybe? I'll be home. Oh, so you're, you're flying straight over to Anaheim from there. Basically, I'm driving, to, I'm driving to Minneapolis and flying out of there, and then I'll be back, yeah. All right. It's a long trip, but truck's full of stuff. Are you? You're not driving to to Anaheim. No, I'm flying. I'll drive back to. I'll I'll be flying from Minneapolis, but I'll be driving there pretty much straight. <laughs> yeah, so you got to get back to Minneapolis for the thirtieth, dude, because our travel day is the twenty seventh. Yeah, I know. I'll be back there the twenty sixth. Mm. Okay, that's what happens when you're a busy Instagram instructor. I know that's that, you know, all this, all, all shit talking aside, Instagram instructions, a lot of work. It's not easy. I, I was, I shit on like true Exodus a lot back in the day. These type of guys, I'm like, God, no, actually being an Instagram instructor is really hard. It's is hard it? guys. So no, what, uh, pretty easy. What do you see? Like, let's, so from the Instagram standpoint, right? Like, is there anything that you are like apprehensive about putting out for free? No. What no, I, it, no. No, it's. Do, do you agree? Other, honestly, like here, people have this, a lot of instructors. They have this mentality that's kind of weird. They're like, "Well, I don't want to give it away for free," but the reality is, I could do podcasts. We could talk about it on Instagram all day long. Uh, people can buy it in a book form for me. They can be a training group member and pay a membership to get, you know, information. They can come to classes. And the fact is people just do all of these things. They just do all these things. So I don't give a shit. Like I'll, I'll put it out anyway. Um, like I kind of, obviously if people come to class, I'm it's like it's more directed and I'm going to spend more time with it, but it's like, you don't hurt yourself. A lot of instructors are afraid to put stuff out for free. They say, and I think really what's happening is they don't have anything to say. And Lucas is right. The guys who won't give it away it's because they have nothing to give. I agree with that. They, they have nothing to give. Yeah. And, it, and, yet, and Chris Palmer saying the info is a piece of it. Yeah, exactly. Like just info in a slice is not of it's, – it's good for people if they're self-motivated. But guys come to class not because they're sifting through all the stuff I put on social media and they're putting stuff together. Those aren't the personalities that come to classes. They come to class if they want to just get it, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, shooting in person, like all that, like, which is, you can't get that experience over the internet anyway. Yeah. So you're not really hurting yourself to put this stuff out. You're helping yourself. You're helping your brand. You're demonstrating knowledge over the source material, knowledge about all these different topics. No, I think it's good. That's why I like the, the, the redneck lies. Like, hey, let's do a conversation with consequence. Yeah. And talk about yeah. it. Um, so in terms of that, like putting it out for free, and I know it's it's not new to you, like training the, the tactical guys. Like you've, I think we were the first ones that brought you in, right? As far as the unit at that level, yeah. You were a little apprehensive for me. Like you were like, oh, it's not really my thing. I was like, trust me, this is your thing. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> For both of us. But yes. in terms of, I think I've tried to like, 
like, hey, Ben, look at these cops. This is what the cops need, the practical side. Like, are you finding, like, that that is interesting to you? Is it rewarding, like, getting into the law enforcement world? I like it a lot. I mean, like, as far as the places I've been. Now, I don't go sell myself to people, but, like, uh, the last agency I was with was the uh, Customs Border Patrol Air and Marine Operations. They're instructors. And that was great. It was a lot of fun. Because they, they wanted me there and they want to work on shooting. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I had a great time. But that's that's not me going, there, like, hey, guys, can we tell you, guys, this is how we're going to win gunfights. We're going to do all this stuff. Like, that's, I, I don't do that. It was just, hey, like, you know, we can work on some shooting with your, your instructors and, and they have fun. And but, it's useful and it's, you know, good knowledge, but, good help. But I will tell you, like, for everyone, from my perspective, from my experience and the places I've been, if a dude shows up telling you how you're going to win gunfights, show him where the front door is. <laughs> Fucking leave. Right? Make me do this better and make the bullets go where they go. Right? Lean on the practical guys. Lean on the practical shooting world. It's not the dude that's like, I was fucking this or that. Like, if it starts with a long resume, like, I think the longest part of your class initially, right, is you telling people, like, hey, we're going to do this or that. Like, it's like a 15 to 10 second bio. I don't, I don't even really do a bio. I, so if there's, if there's a law enforcement or military group that may not know me, like somebody else on their team or in their agency brought me there, I'll just say, hey, my name's this. My name's Ben Steger. I, you know, my trade is competitive shooting. That's what I've been doing is competitive shooting, shooting instruction um, for this, I mean, whatever, however many years. It's been a long time now. I'm getting old. But uh, yeah, like, yep, this is what I do. This is what I've spent my time doing. And let's start doing it pretty much. You tell them like, Hey, I don't know if these words mean anything to you, but like world champ, nope. like you can Google it, figure it out. I don't, that's I don't. Way. So, so actually there's been a few guys that get like mud sucked where they don't like, I don't shoot. Maybe I don't shoot right away in front of them. And then I start shooting. And then they're like, what the fuck? What the fuck is happening here? And, and that's, that's kind of funny. And I, w I will tell you, like, for me, that was, the first time we linked up, that was a game changer. It, like, reset what normal was. Like, and I always, I think the the first day I saw you shoot, I created, like, the Chuck Liddell, mental, the Chuck Liddell analogy, right? Like, it was impossible to knock out Chuck Liddell for years and years and years until Rampage Jackson knocked him out. And then, <laughs> if you wanted to be a... UFC fighter, Chuck Liddell became like the stepping stone. Like, oh, because everyone figured his game out. And yeah. seeing it, once you figure it out and you see it in real life, it becomes a reality. It becomes a possibility to you. And I think that is like the goal with training. That's half of anything for a person is knowing that it's possible, I think, of any endeavor. It's yeah. like, like the first dude to run a four minute mile was the game changer, right? Then everybody's like, oh, well, it's possible. So then there's like more and more people doing that. One question in the chat. Have you ever had Ellie and Mill really resist what you're telling them? Ready for it? No, I haven't. So uh, despite all these years of uh, the sort of experience that I have, um, no. I think those conversations happen on the internet, like in real life, like, I mean, yeah. you can envision it. If there's some guy who's struggling at doing a thing for shooting and I'm there like, hey, try this, try that. Like, let's try this. Like, no, he's not going to try to buck me because he, it seems stupid. Like in person, it's, I mean, when you have like, in an actual class, everybody's shooting each other like that, you, you would feel kind of dumb probably no, to be like, no, every, I can't do that because that's not like tactically sound or whatever. It's like, whatever. And every, it's never happened. Every dude that I've ever shot with from the, the LE side that is resistant from the practical side can't argue with results. I can do X, Y, Z with a pistol and a rifle. You can't. So you decide if you want to listen or not. I don't give a fuck. Like, it's... You're already at the losing end of an argument in terms of historical hit percentages 
and where you guys are at and skills and ability. So if you want to argue and fight, well, it's this or that, and I come from a different world, do you want to argue the competitive side or the tactical side? Because I'll argue both of them. <laughs> like, it's, I've had success in both things. Like, what do you want to argue that said? The gunfighting standpoint, most dudes that want to argue about gunfights never been in a fucking gunfight. Most tactical shooters never been in a gunfight. Right? I understand your training for ideas and concepts, worst case scenarios. I get that. But don't, if your, if your opinions don't match your level of commitment, we're going to fall off the radar really, really quick. Like, you're just, you're just talking to fucking talk, right? If you think you're going to fight something that you don't know about, like, this is the Instagram world, right? Like, I got all this kit. I got all this shit. I'm going to do this thing. You're never, 2A, you're never going to take my fucking guns. 100% we're going to, your guns are going away. <laughs> Or, Shut the fuck or, up. Or they'll just let you keep your guns and they'll make it so your kids can't have guns and you're not going to do shit about that either. And everybody knows it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the same dudes that like, you know, the level of commitment is fucking shitty. It's like, hey, dude, set your alarm for four in the morning, get up, do 10 push-ups. Oh, uh, man. Yes, that's, that's, the, that's yeah. the best test, like, right? The, the I bet this is why I had a lot of fun when you uh, were talking about building your mindset and fighting. And you're like, yeah, I used to carry a mouth guard into bars. And yeah, I have my sons wrestle and stuff like that. And people look at like uh, uh, their idea of what some operator guy or some special operations dude should be. And they focus on, well, what, what kind of rifle is that? And what kind of optic is on the rifle? And what kind of kit is he running? And it's like, do you think that shit is the more important part of the equation? Or do you think like the personality type that is happy to go out and get into fist fights with people in bars? Like, what do you think is more important to that? Yeah. Like to me, to, you know, like, what do you think matters? So most guys will never understand that mentality. They don't, they don't get it to where it's like back in, in the day, that was a joke. Like, obviously, being 47 years old, that was a little bit of, like, a tumultuous time in my life. And my wife lived through it. There are plenty of dudes I know that lived through it. Like, I got <laughs> plenty of dudes, like, you get, like, oh, Ike's doing Ike shit. Like, <laughs> that, was, that was how you built that mentality at that time, right? So if you're... To me, when, when guys are doing things that are less than that, I have a hard time, like, getting sold on, like, oh, well, I'm this or that. It's like, all right, meet me at this address. Let's have a fucking fist. Let's have a friendly fist fight. Well, what the fuck do you mean a friendly fist fight? I mean, we can go to a field and just punch it up and then go drink beers afterwards. If this is your game, violence is your fucking game, like – this was what we all lived in back in the day. And guys don't understand that they're everybody loves violence on their own terms. And that's why the fighting shit needs to just get out of the shooting world. Like I like violence when it's placated to me. Well, you don't know what real violence is because violence is a two way street, right? Everybody can do, everybody's a fucking wizard by themselves. Put yeah. another guy in front of you, it changes it. Case in point, Redneck Lives. Mike Glover, Two Lamb, GBRS. Travis Haley's the only one that came on. Right, but you even look how that went for Travis. And I, in my opinion, a lot of his, his responses were kind of rote. It was like kind of from the playbook that he had. It was, you know, semi-polished. It'd be pretty polished, actually. Like, he'd give an answer. But then if he got thrown off of that, it wasn't good. It's, yeah, yes, I agree with all that, but I, I will tell you, I give him a thousand percent more credit than I give any of those other companies. Because yeah, he actually he, came on. Because he did it. Yeah. And, and then honestly, I think it would be, it would make for some interesting other conversations, right? I had, I had like an hour and a half conversation with him the night before it, whereas like, dude, we could have 10 fucking topics to talk about. 
that would be interesting. We would be polarizing opposites in terms of viewpoints, but in terms of discussion amongst the community, it'd be good. You, you'll you never get that with GBRS, Two Lamb, Mike Glover. Those guys just got to be the fucking heroes in their own mind. It's like, cool, let's, let's start talking about some shit. Well, I can't talk about it unscripted. It's got to be this perfectly polished YouTube video that all my investors paid for and all this bullshit. It's like, okay, well then we'll just sit here on the fucking outskirts and make fun of your bullshit. Cause it's all clown show stuff. And this is my view on it. Yeah. We the what it says Haley shoots exceptionally well compared to the guys that did not come on. Does I don't I can't really assess Haley shooting because all I can see is a two two four two two drill. Typically on that fucking screen, the, the uh, ocular tracking shit. So I will say, I just talked to a, a guy who I would assess is, like, very high-level shooter. Like, very, very good. And he kind of vouched for, like, Travis. He was like, hey, man, he's got some skill. Now, where right, that's... I where believe that's, that. I mean, if, if you say the guy's solid, I believe it. I just... Where that skill lies or whatever. Like, I've never shot with Travis, but this was a guy that I would say, like, I don't I don't put as much credence into him as I do for you or what you say, but I was like, I value his opinion. And he was like, yeah, he can do all the things. And it was interesting. So I was like, all right, well, maybe at one point we shoot together. No, I mean, and lots of lots of bad instructors can shoot really well. Which is another problem. Yeah. It's another thing, but yeah. That's where I think the whole disconnect was for that live. It wasn't about a lot of people thought the live was about that video. Do you guys like Grantham? I think Grantham is likable as a I don't think he's selling himself as anything he's not, is he? No, I think Grantham is an entertainment channel, right? He's like a Yeah. I think Air he's Air Force a... PJ dude that is like he's playing into an industry thing where he likes to talk and loves his comments, loves his YouTube following, and it's a good business for him. Yeah, and I think he's 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 got the certain charisma on camera and, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, it's all that shit. So it's like, but am I looking at Grand Thumb for training? Absolutely not. Oh, not a PJ, they say. Not a PJ. Oh, he's a TAC P? I mean, I don't give a fuck what he is. It doesn't matter to me. He is grand thumb to me, regardless of what his uh, military, <laughs> <What's>... exper- <laughs> military experience is. He's a fucking YouTube celebrity. What are you reading? What's going on? Uh, the dude who said, what's, uh, what's your issue with GBRS? <laughs> they seem to be fucking retarded seems to be the issue. Yeah, the big issue is that it's DJ Shipley and Cole Frackler. They are marketing their the brand, the Navy SEAL brand. Read Counterculture, read that book, and you'll understand about the Navy SEAL brand. I know for a fact, at no point in my entire military career, when we were trying to figure out things, did we look to see what the fuck Navy SEALs were doing with shooting to figure it out. So... Take that for what it's worth. What else is up? What are you reading? I'm just reading through here. They got, uh, what about Sheriff of Baghdad? I've talked to John on the phone a few times. Um, I know a lot of the dudes I train are uh, up in Ohio, have stepped away from him and kind of his ideology and what he thinks. But, uh, Never shot with John. We share like some same similarities in terms of where we came from, same call signs and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, yeah. At one, he lives really close to me. So, at one point, I got to drive over there and just fucking hang out with him. But really, same call signs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Same That's call some sign patch at the end. Yeah, it's very weird. That is weird. Yeah. I had no idea. The uh, well, there you go. With completely 
different ideas about training for sure. Well, you were, you were big on shooting as I recall. Yep. Yep. I like to shoot. No Wait, doubt. but he wasn't big on when he had that, that job, he wasn't big on the shooting with his boys. I don't know. I wasn't there at that time. I think he was, but I think in terms of the business side, it's different, right? Like oh. John films, like he loves shot Mac. He films everything and like draws lines and tries to talk you on. Like I know plenty of dudes that have gone to John McPhee courses, like two day course where they'll shoot like 50 rounds. And hmm. the teaching part of it is all on the computer, like filming you and then like, Oh, see your arms are this line and this line and what you want to fix, but whether they go back and fix it, I don't know. Hey, Matt, what military unit has the best shooters? Aside from AMU, I guess. Yeah, uh, hands down, best shooters, AMU. The other one is the unit. That's the best shooter. That's an easy. Question. Green Ops, that's Mike Green. He's cool. Mike is cool. Mike Green, yeah, in Texas, right? Yeah, yeah, I like Mike. He's good. You can't like Mike. You got to be against him. All right, fuck Mike, that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> now, I shot with Mike. I went out there and did some training with, uh, I think, the parent company that he worked for. Counting so, Coup, I don't know, but uh, I like him. I like what he's putting out on Instagram. It seems very sensible to me. So, Counting Coup's videos, and I will say this, they're, like, fucking therapeutic. Because he just gets on and talks. And I think he lives close to me. Like, he lives on the other side of Fort Bragg, maybe in Whispering Pines. I think so. But his videos, like, he just starts talking. And it's very, like, he does videos filming himself talking very lot, like, Redneck Live-esque, where he doesn't give a fuck about what he says, which I like that. Well, that no, the unedited and unscripted, well, basically unscripted sort of format demonstrates that he, he knows what he's talking about, too. Yeah. I don't it's know. It's just obvious guy. from watching it. I think, he, I, I think he's like an SF dude, maybe local, maybe third group or something. Um, but I, I believe, like, he has, he has something to do with the company uh, Spiritus. They're here. They make, uh, like, armor and uh, – not armor, nylon type – carriers and shit i bought a lot of stuff from them for the new job i love spiritist stuff very good very good yeah um wait so here's a question matt you, you i'm curious your your take on this because uh, so when seeking training always go for uspsa instruction <sighs> no so here's the thing with training man like what are you wanting to train Right. So a lot of guys will look at guns, right? Whether we're we're dealing with pistols, rifles, whatever. We're we're trying to be as good with this tool as we can be. Let's isolate that. And then that's gonna drive who you look to. I would think. It 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 has for me. I'm not gonna get into a dude that's like I don't like the over science shit. I don't like the the tactical shit, right? Obviously, I'm a tactical shooter by trade. So you coming in with your fucking stories does nothing for me. It actually kind of irritates me to where I don't want to listen to your one instance of shooting a guy. I want to know how to do the thing with this tool really, really aggressively. Now, whatever context that is, Let's build that into the class. If it's a vehicle class, a shooting class, a practical class, is it a fundamentals class? Is it like a skills and drills class like Ben teaches that's teaching me how to train? That's where I look to training. I don't – so I don't want to have a bunch of other bullshit layered on top of me doing this with a pistol or a rifle. Just my view. Um, there's another 
There's another good one on here. A uh, guy asked about Sentinel Concepts. That's Fisher, right? Yeah, I don't know. That yeah, his dude. reputation sucks. I don't know the guy, but no, I know the reputation's bad. I know. I just was talking to uh, another training company about him, where they were like, "There was." There's a story where he like got armbarred by a fucking student. So I guess he has the the mentality where he picks certain students and he starts fucking with them through class. Well, I do that. No, but like overtly. And then he got a little hands-on with a guy and it ended up where on day two of the class, the dude took him down and put him in a fucking arm bar because the guy <laughs> was a bit of a grappler. And there was a number of students that kind of walked away and was like, what the fuck? And left the class and the other one stayed. But I guess it took Steve a few minutes to recover and, uh, Dude, a lot of these guys are like, right, so... Steve Didn't he destroy did. a bunch of steel at OTOA? He did, yeah. Yeah, he shot a bunch of steel up and fucked it up. I don't think he's welcome back there. Like, a lot of these guys have history. None of this history gets out either, right? Because the tactical community, right, it's it's toxic if you if you say... Oh, well, I don't really like this guy. I don't like that guy. It's toxic. It's a weird thing, Ben. Having you as an Instagram instructor is a very unique experience for Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's fun. (laughs) I don't know who it's fun for, but it's it's fun for me. It's It's not that fun for the other Instagram instructors, I don't think. No. So, yeah, I don't know. Man, I don't know. See, Sentinel Concepts is his company. I think he's doing all right. I don't know. He teaches. It's not my clientele, but he, um, I think he's doing all right. Maybe. I think, I think there's a different uh, denominator there, Matt. Who knows? Who fucking cares? Like, I don't care. Like, if, if Steve Fisher takes a business away from me, I'm like, Good for you. I don't. I'll see you next year when you realize that that shit was whack. (laughs) Like, I don't know. One minute out, Jamie Caldwell. I don't know him. I know Jamie. Me and Jamie are in the same troop together for years. So he's probably he's probably squared away then, huh? Jamie does a lot of night vision stuff, right? So, um, in terms of. Night vision training, if you want to know technical aspects about what your night vision is capable of, Jamie is hands down the subject matter expert. What about photronic barriers and such? I don't, he'll probably talk about that. Good. <laughs> no, Jamie knows, he knows the ins and outs of all the night vision shit in terms of shooting. I shot with Jamie uh, a couple times. Like, obviously, I shot with him a bunch in the mail. Um, and I don't know how much of his class is built around like the performance side of shooting. I, I, I don't know. I don't think a lot of it is. I think a lot of it's built around the technical understanding of what MVGs can do and what your lasers and optics can do in terms of actively aiming over MVGs and passively aiming. That that's what I would think the focus of it is. It's not, performance-based shooting. Look at that. And they're asking about Chris Costa. That's another, like, Chris Costa's name doesn't really come up in these discussions, I don't think, as far as, like, performance shooting type instruction. I don't know. I know dudes love him. They love his classes, like, super friendly, super, like, uh, whatever like i don't i dude i don't think me and chris casa would get along why do you say that i don't know i'm i mean you spent years and years talking about shooting people you're like a fucking coast guard dude like where does your fundamental basis for what you train comes from and stegger what about cowden (laughs) i heard 
I heard the story Cowden was putting out. This he got on my radar when I heard a story about how he was going through selection for a certain unit, and he he claims he broke his back, and then he woke up in the hospital, and there was an officer there standing there to tell him that he he was now out of selection, um, like medically, and that let's not true. Say, that sounded a bit fishy to me. It sounded a bit fishy, so um, you know, that not that true. was how I heard about him, Tony. If you ever want to come out alive and talk about your selection (laughs) experience, believe me, I can talk about it from a point of authority. So let's talk about it. I didn't think the officers just hang out in hospitals waiting for enlisted dudes to wake up. (laughs) Did he do that? No, I can. Yeah. (laughs) Tony Cowan was a Victor Whiskey fucking early on in selection. Uh Oh, VW. I wonder what that means. Maybe Volun- somebody in the chat will know. Voluntary withdrawal. withdrawal. Quitter. Yeah. Oh, I've heard they're not going to let you out medically, so this is what I've heard. No, you can have a goddamn bone sticking out of your fucking leg, and no one's going to pull you medical. So, <laughs> Tony, your shit's bullshit. So, whatever, hero. 19 but that was, this was a whole, the, he has a whole pattern of this stuff that his grandmaster thing in USPSA, total bullshit. And then his uh, endurance racing or whatever that was, we found, found one race where it showed his GPS track and it just disappeared for a couple hours and reappeared on the course. I mean, like yeah. obvious cheating. Dude, <laughs> it's I think hilarious. T- Tony has a history of like egocentric type mentality shit where pump himself up. Right. And I think, Lucas had, like, I think Lucas shot with him a little bit, and then there was a falling out. Like, Tony's a fucking egomaniac. Like, he's whatever. I, I mean, well, then he was you're, running you're, for office, and then he got a new truck right away. It's like a bunch of donations come in, and oh shit, Tony's got a new truck. What's going on here? Boy, I, I don't wonder. Know. Is he still <laughs> running for office? No, no, he lost the primary. He's fucked, but yeah. Uh, you're a dude, you were like a 19th group SF dude. No one gives a fuck. Like, shut up. <laughs> Keep giving out GM cards at your range, dude. David Acosta Jr. is here. He jumped in late. We should get him on. I want to talk about, well, some Hold knife on. stuff, maybe? Some Dave. knife stuff? Dave, if you're willing. I just Mike Lover's you. putting out knife videos now. I think this might be maybe a little targeted. I don't know. Hey, Dave, I just invited you, man, if you're interested in it, like, uh, could be good. I don't know. I don't want to do anything that uh, messes no. Dave up. Like, I know how the the overarching theme of, hold on a minute, All right, yeah, we're going to join. Oh, Dave don't give a fuck. He's... I'm telling you. Oh, I'm down. Hold on. This is about to get spicy. Hey, Dave, if you're listening, I'm trying to accept it. It's uh, it's working against me right now. So we'll, we'll get this going. It's funny. Having so. a dummy. That's how I met Dave originally was uh Gentlemen. Hello There he is. How goes it, man? It goes good. We were just talking about you. Obviously you heard it, so Which is the best knife for a Green Beret to carry? <laughs> Depends on what that Green Beret is doing. Uh killing people in many fights, many battles. Heroically. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely push them in a certain direction of a blade that's driven towards that specific emphasis of focus. Something made so by give... uh, Phil Rapier, Amtac Blades, or by uh, Harley Elmore of uh, Headhunter Blades. Uh, very purpose-driven tools. Okay. So, hey, Dave. We, I'm uh, on the highway, we, so. We, we, we... No, I know. Yeah, man, I know you're driving. Thanks for coming on. We were talking about uh, before. Don't know what you were like, 
willing to talk about like uh obviously there was a video release a youtube video was a very pointed attack i i haven't seen any youtube videos i've seen some uh short snippets of a a video that a bunch of people have sent me saying that it seems yeah. to be uh like somebody's throwing shots um, no it, i don't know if don't you wait don't not, you work at field craft survival i think it was don't you teach hey. for them Ben, let's uh, so let's lift and shift to something else, right? Let's talk about the blade stuff, right? The uh, the what do you think is the apprehensiveness of guys dealing with blade work, right? Guys that like firearms, we're 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 training a CCW perspective, but there there seems to be like we talked about this day just the other day where you introduce a blade into it everything changes for a little bit. Like, what do you think about that? Why does it change? Uh, people fear what they don't understand. And they don't realize, most people don't realize, like, the, the degree of seriousness when it comes to a violence perspective, <coughs> the minute you start looking at things through a blade lens, um, there are absolute advantages to using a blade in defense of human life that most people can't even fathom. And there are obviously disadvantages, right? Like just like there is anything else. There's advantages to a pistol over a carbine in specific contextual scenarios. The same way there's advantages to carbines over pistols, specifically within a given context. No different than there is a blade. Um, when it comes to blade stuff, people get weird. Uh, you've got two ends of uh, a, a pretty broad spectrum of perspectives with intent, but I'll tell you one thing, like the blade community is definitely smaller, definitely weirder in certain aspects, but there's a lot of people talking about blade stuff that frankly, they have no business discussing uh, any of so, them. So I will yeah, say from, from my experience and like my introduction into it, the blade community is much, much smaller, right? And it's much more tribal in nature to where, um, it almost like you're conditioned to a thing like where I get people ask me blade questions and I'm like, no, dude, I'm an infant in this shit. Direct them at other people. Like it's much more uh, reserved and like, hey, this is our thing. It can't get out. But now when you look at the firearms community, case in point, the last week, Every swinging dick is trying to put a fucking fast draw video out. Like, why is that different? So, like, with the blade stuff, it is so... It can be so effective in so many different ways that there's certain aspects of that that you don't want as just public... You just don't want that as public information, period. Um, certain aspects of it you just don't want out there as just open source info. Um, hey, Ben. There, sorry. No. Ben, let me ask you this, dude. Like, so, very brief law enforcement background. Have you ever, ever been interested in, like, blade stuff? Yeah, so what we got in Academy was so minor. It was, like, um, it was basically, like, for the amount of training that dudes get to get, to get a law enforcement job, it's, like, all we can teach you with blades is basically just like trying to get the fuck away and create distance. Like they're not going to try to teach people how to get in there and knife fight with dudes or anything like that because we just there was no time. And it's like it's like that. That was what was explained back in those days in the academy. And that uh, shit that made sense to me. I'm like these blades. Uh, this shit looks scary as hell. I want to stay away from these things. I want to create so, distance. So I this. think I think for me using dirty knowledge, right? I've been. I know we've trained like intimately a bunch of times in terms of hand speed and concepts and the way that you look at training, that would be a very, very interesting thing. Like, not that it's like, Hey, I'm going to, I need this blade. I need this skill. I'm going to employ it, but let's look at it from a training standpoint. Right. Cause ultimately that's what we're trying to do is change the way guys train. So if I can take a dude, we already took a dude that was like a no shit badass pistol shooter and made him a badass rifle shooter. 
Yeah. With a little bit of information and a shit ton of work that you did on your own. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of what happened, right? Yeah. Now, if there was another thing like, hey, understanding hand speed, understanding training paradigms and training methodology the same way, could you get excited about developing that same hand speed with a blade? Sure, why not? That would be I mean, interesting. Does it look cool on Instagram, though? It it looks different on Instagram. It looks violent on Instagram. And I'm not like saying, that. man, fuck Instagram. I'm just talking about from a I'm an Instagram standpoint. instructor, Matt. This is important. <laughs> this is my life. But yes, but what, no, I could, yeah, I could, whatever. You guys want me to fuck with blades? Why not? But fuck what it. it would do is there there are guys that, that Dave has continuous access to, right? Two on Harley Elmore, two on Tom Keir that are like the gatekeepers of this this training stuff, right? They're, they're doing all the things. And the knife stuff, like, I would say, like, let me ask you this. Like, why are knives viewed so differently than pistols? Because of the degree of Anybody. intimacy when it comes to violence. Yeah. So what does that say, though, about – so remove the word intimacy and just leave the violence there. How is that different than the pistol? Proxemics. But I think we start talking about dudes that train with pistols are enthusiasts and they don't really understand violence. Without a doubt. Like, you have a lot of people that will train with a pistol, and they look at it as, you know, like, hey, I'm going to go do a thing with this thing with no intent of ever having to use it in defense of human life. And that's And I think, though, I mean, it's completely fine. So I tell plenty of people, like, right, the pursuit of getting really good at shooting is a very worthless endeavor. It's like getting good at golf. Ben's making his frowny face, but that it's like getting good at golf, right? You're never going to use it for real. You're not a PGA Tour player. Why the fuck do you put so much money and effort into it? Ben, why do you think, like, in your. Most people don't put effort into getting good at shooting, most people put effort into acquiring firearms and, and strutting around. Wow. Yes. So they put a lot of money into it, right? Yes. So let's talk about hardware versus software. (laughs) Right? Like guys want to have, well, if I get the staccato, I get this thing, that thing, the right belt, the right hanger, like that's going to make me good, right? Well, you've been to enough matches. You see, I, I say this, like, 90% of guys at USPSA matches are not trying. In the sense, like, they are not trying to improve themselves match to match. They're, like, participation kind of is the goal. Like, they want to do well at the match, sure, but it's like they show up, they wear their jersey, they shoot the match, they participated. That's basically what they were trying to do in the first place at that point. And there's like 10% of dudes are like really, really pushing and trying to get better. I agree with that, like from a match perspective. So Dave, in terms of like your training, right? I know you got, you got the family, you got all these things going on. When you're training, right? When you say, Hey, I'm training myself. What do you think percentages you're putting into in terms of effort and time for you training yourself? Is that occupy oh my your goodness. life? Like that's 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 literally from the minute I wake up. Like that's just uh, to be to be cross trained in multiple disciplines, right? Like I look at like if we look if you're training for violence, right? Just like a random act of violence, or whatever. You have to look at it from the from the perspective of how like the dynamics of how violence works. I'm not the one going around looking for it. If you're going to be involved in a random act of violence, like obviously, first and foremost, do everything you can to get away from it. But it always, like, the bad guy has a vote, man. 
like obviously stay away from bad places. Like we could talk about all 